What's good, y'all? Welcome back to our channel, I'm Kay. I'm Brandon. <coughs> Eagles. Brandon. Brandon. So, um, we're gonna react to... What's the dirt? What's the dirt? <laughs> uh, Kendrick Euphoria does actually explain some of the info. So, we're gonna react to this. It's it gonna is, be a long video. It is a very long one, but we're gonna try to... It might drop into our... parts, or it might just be one long video, but y'all will see you. Yeah, so y'all so. gonna see when we drop it, so... Beware. So uh, we're gonna react to this because we got some new info on this. It's crazy how we still reacting to Kendrick and Drake. I feel like this yeah, it's, is still it's more. Been a month. It's like been a month. right, somebody had comment on our video saying that they still like watching reaction videos to this. Yeah. So that's why I just know like it's just this this shit is not over. Yet. That's why I really don't think it's over. Yeah, I don't think it's over either. And like Kendrick, he has a show coming up June nineteenth. And uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It just seems like it's just something crazy is just gonna happen. Yeah, I do have that feeling. I just hope. I really hope that he announces his album, like, like when it's supposed to drop, because he has to drop an album this year. Like, it's it's so much like momentum, like going like his way. Mm -hmm. Like he has to like capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. But um. Well, sure. So before we get to video, watch our other videos. You know, road to fifteen hundred. Y'all can watch our whole. Kendrick and Drake beef like all the songs like reactions and all that. Go mm -hmm. check all that stuff out. Everybody still comment on that. We yeah. still appreciate everybody appreciate y'all for real. Yeah. Keep sending these channels to people that you like. Be on the road like, to fifteen hundred. Like. Yes, and yeah, so we're very close, y'all. So keep on sharing this and we're for sure, for sure. Yeah. Also, my birthday on Monday, y'all. Mm. <laughs> I have not been announcing that. Gemini season. Yeah, it's my birthday on Monday, y'all. Uh, Comment down below, happy birthday. Yeah, ahead of time. But yeah, y'all can do that ahead of time if y'all want to. Yeah. Cause it's slowly approaching. It's like it's coming up fast, so. Mm. But yeah, so, get into this. Like, comment, subscribe, y'all. So, it's gonna record such right now. Boom. Get into this loom, this movie. All right, guys, so I'm clearly behind the curve right now. Diss tracks are dropping left, right, and center. And all I can really do is do... It's crazy, like, he just getting started breaking down all these diss tracks as well. Right, right. He's one at a time. What I can say is that I put an it's enormous crazy, amount of effort and Taylor. time into these videos. And, and no there's point. a reason right. why he all of my breakdowns are different from everyone else's. Right, to try and figure out what it all means, like, I'm not just pulling info from Genius. I'm studying the lyrics for hours and hours and hours, like... A lot of time goes into this. With all that said, just a week ago, Kendrick Lamar dropped a six minute diss record towards Drake. And I really do appreciate anyone that waited for this video, the patience, like, I know what this moment is. I can't do this twice, so I'm trying to do it right. All right, so first and foremost, the title, Euphoria. So much to unpack Euphoria. in this in itself. Now, as you guys know, on Drake's track, Taylor Made, he said that he was expecting a quintuple entendre from Kendrick due to his delay. You better have a motherfucking quintuple entendre on that shit. Some shit I don't even understand. Really if Kendrick did that, you like... better have a quintuple entendre on that shit. <laughs> like, god damn, bro. I'm like, uh, what would you get bug with? <laughs> <laughs> Sir? That shit is funny. How he gonna back out of something that he asked for? That's crazy. Man. In the title, and then some. Now, before I break down all the meanings of this title, I want to point out the true hidden meanings first, which everyone has missed, and it is quite literally a large part of the entire premise and setup of this record. Uma Thurman from Kill Bill recently tagged Drake in a post on Instagram, offering him the iconic suit, where she fends off multiple opponents. Now, the objective of her character is that of revenge. She is quite literally trying to kill Bill. However, there is a scene in the series where Bill claims that she is a liar who is not just incapable of telling the truth about him, but telling the truth to herself. Because when it comes to the subject of me, I believe you are truly and utterly incapable of telling the truth, especially to me, and least of all, to yourself. 
To address his issues with her lies, Bill shoots her with a dart containing a serum called the Undisputed Truth mm. and states that the serum will cause a state of euphoria. That's why. Mm. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> That's what lies crazy. within that dart is an incredibly potent and quite infallible truth serum. I call it the Undisputed Truth with no druggy after effect except for a slight wave of euphoria. And that is quite literally the setup of how Kendrick approaches this record by he, presenting wait, what- I might be, I might read that. But even the way he said euphoria, didn't he, he, didn't he probably just say it in the same tone as he did? What you mean? He's the one like, listening? He was like euphoria. Yeah, he said it at the beginning, and after said, uh, the Richard Pryor thing. And then Bill kind of said it like that too, he said euphoria. Yeah. But he did it in the same tone. I, don't, I might be reaching, but I don't, that's just, I mean, I, Look, he got pictures of detail. <laughs> I mean, he kind of did say in the same tone, he said euphoria. And that's what Kendrick did, and that's what Bill did. Right. He feels to be nonstop undisputed truths about Drake. It is in this track and the upcoming tracks where you will see Kendrick paints Drake as a liar, as an actor, crazy. as someone that lies to himself. That might be a two and hour. just like Bill <laughs> in this movie, Kendrick does not believe a word that Drake says. However, in the very first line of this track, Kendrick makes reference to superpowers getting neutralized, which is the exact same thing that Bill talks about in the same scene of this movie. Yes, there's the superhero and there's the alter ego. Batman is actually Bruce Wayne. Spider-Man is actually Peter Parker. When that character wakes up in the morning, he's Peter Parker. He has to put on a costume to become Spider-Man. That characteristic, Superman stands alone. Superman didn't become Superman. Superman was born yeah, Superman. Superman. When Superman wakes exactly. up in the morning, he's Superman. His outfit with the mm. big red S, that's the blanket yeah, he was wrapped sad. in as a baby when the camps found him. Those are his clothes. Bill describes mm. the alter ego of superheroes who require a costume oh, shit. to become yeah, that, that character. Sense. This is exactly what Kendrick Andrew, does yeah. in most of his record as he strategically picks Drake's character apart. <laughs> Bill then goes on to point Good out show. that Superman is always Superman. When he wakes show. up in the morning, he does not have a character. He was born Superman. Now, as we move further into this track, and as Kendrick alludes to Drake being a fraud, Kendrick is saying that when it comes to hip hop, he is Superman. Dun, da, da, da. He was born this person dun, da, da, da. in the culture that Drake impersonates with no need for a costume. So when Kendrick refers to superpowers becoming neutralized, he is essentially he saying violence. that in this track and in this war, he is removing the costume from Drake to expose his true identity. And mm. speaking of beef, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Cook Unity. Get Cook. your bag, get your bag. So, time uh, to quit. What that's are crazy. I'm saying Unity really broke down. Work gives a clear definition of what that means. Secondly, the artwork then also provides an example of the word euphoria being used in an actual sentence where it states, they had almost a week to recover from the euphoria of Tuesday's series winning victory, and Kendrick dropped the track on a Tuesday, alluding to how this record is giving him a win, also a reference to his upcoming tracks as well. Furthermore, Drake executive produced the hit show Euphoria, a show depicting the lives of teenagers who find themselves in very adult-like situations. Hmm. <laughs> Therefore, this reference- Horny ass teens. Comment down below your favorite uh, Euphoria moment down below. I said mine. I'm trying to see if it's uh... So mine's is when Rue, when she was on the run. That was funny. <laughs> That whole episode was just up and down, up and down. It really it was, was. It was so much going on it in the episode. Was. Uh, dang, that's so long ago. I don't. I barely remember it. Yeah. But I say mine was when. What is? What was Angus Cloud character? Uh, Fez. Fez. Fez when he punched Nate. Oh, when he beat up Nate. Yeah, that was that was a cool Somebody moment. Somebody had to do it, bro. He. Somebody had to. <laughs> he beat the brakes off that boy. For real. That yeah. was like my favorite part. Comment down below yours. <laughs> also, clearly with respect to the ongoing rumors that Drake is into much younger women. However, the title is even more deeper than that. I'm talking about the studied phenomenon where people experience a state of euphoria before they die. This is by far the most strategic <laughs> use of the title, as this is exactly what happened to Drake. 
Euphoria is in every sense of the word a bait track. Look at how confident Drake was. Like Kendrick fucking knew he had all those records recorded. Done, ready, waiting. Kendrick knew that Drake felt he had a slam dunk in his beef. He knew that when Drake dropped the Family Matters track, that Drake would have been living on a high, feeling like he won, leaving Drake in a state of euphoria. And to think about it, yeah, and to think about it because of his previous beats with Meek Mill. Push. Because he was on a high. Yeah. And he got away like yeah. with winning. Because like, social media. Yeah. He, yeah, he had social media on his side. It's just now... Kendrick flipped all that on. Yeah, even so though he Pusha studied T, all that. Even though Pusha T, he lost, so that one was different. But yeah, with him versus Meek Mill, I don't know, him versus Joe Budden, it's like, I do not remember like that time. Yeah, I don't remember either. But, I don't know. But Yeah, it's like Kendrick studied that whole era of Drake getting, like, beefing with them. And that yeah. probably was... That was probably pissing Kendrick off that yeah. he was like, you know, like on a high the whole time saying like, oh, I'm really like da 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 yeah. When he know those artists and rappers was really like that. Yeah. Like with the, you they know, were just and, and the, yeah, and the fact that they lost, that shit probably pissed him off. He's like, oh, hell no, he ain't gonna do that with me. Right. So he was probably like, he wanted to end and plus, up. And plus, like, it's so easy to like know what Drake is gonna do next because like he's always on social media, like, I don't know, like, it's, Drake, he's just, like, so, like, predictable. Just because he he's just always on social media. And Kendrick, that's what makes Kendrick so unpredictable, because, like, he's never on social media. Like, for real. Uh, he's out of the way. For real. However, just like when people experience euphoria moments before they die, this is exactly what Kendrick did to Drake. Sure. Strategically releasing a showstopper record. Mm just moments after Drake What's dropped. Show hey, look, you don't have to believe I, we, that. Shawn I, Michaels I, level show stopping. <laughs> yeah, oh, dang. What's the thing? I was going to say this song. I don't know the song to it. Oh, show. sexy boy. Oh, sexy yeah. boy. That's one of Shawn Michaels uh, nicknames. And he said sexy boy. That boy came in quick. Uh -huh. But yeah, I even remember us even reacting that night. Bro, what like was it? it was Family Matters. Yeah, numbers. we was finna go chill, and then all of a sudden, like we was finna edit, like we edited like the video we was about to, we about to get it uploaded and everything. Then meet the Grams drop like right, right after. after. It was we like, was like, what the fuck? Then when we listened to it, we was not expecting, but we was <laughs> yeah. Like, so we literally, we reacted that same. I'm pretty sure all the directors reacted that same yeah. night. So it was just. Ooh. Yeah, y'all can go back and watch that. That's crazy because li years later on, we all gonna look back on this and be like, yo. Bro, like, what a time, bro. For real, we feel me part of history. All the reactors were part of history of this. Facts. But I had this as a prediction in this script before any of those records even came out. I truly made the connection that Drake would experience a great deal of euphoria from that release only to have it taken away by Kendrick. And it sucks that I couldn't get the video out in time, That's tough. but seeing it yeah. all come true shit was happening so really fast. just lets me know that all the time and effort that I put in this shit For real, he really does hold yeah. some weight. You so this was literally all part of his plan. The long wait, the being quiet, like making Drake believe that he had the upper hand. Strategy, chess, fucking phenomenal. For real. With the title out of the way, I've seen some theories bouncing around that are trying to support the claims of Drake being involved with younger women through the use of the date that the record dropped, April 30th, also known as National Children's Day. It's a holiday in Mexico, like not, it's yeah, not an American holiday. I, I don't see the significance. Yeah, then we got the theory that? of Kendrick holding back the record to drop it on the date that the funny mustache man was killed. And given the fact that Drake is yeah, of that faith, that. people seem to think that something is also here. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Like, the funny mustache That should have been the Tuesday slide. Hello, kid. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, slide. <laughs> I'm gonna be really stupid right now. When he Bro. died, that was like one of the best things to ever happen for that religion. Quite literally, the ending of suffering. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Outside of the date, the time that the record dropped was 8 24 oh, p.m., which is an ode to Kobe Bryant, who wore the numbers 8 and 24. You far with your glorified and made his. Man, that one does make sense. So we looked at the title, we looked at the date, the time, now let's look at the beat selection. Structurally, the track is broken up into three parts with three different beats. Comment down below your favorite verse from this song. Oh, mine's... Anyway, the first verse aged the best. I ain't gonna lie. And... Uh, I might have to go... I don't know, man. It's tough. 
Because yeah. I listen to this song. Oh, it switches every time. Yeah, it's I listen switched. to this song too many times. I can't lie, but uh, I tell you, this song just goes. Mine is when he said, uh, "I'm the big, I'm your biggest hair. I hate the way you walk, the way you talk, I hate the way you dress. Mm. Oh, so, uh, I hate the way surprise you want some that right yeah, there." And yeah. he's, I think it was another verse. I like he said like. Dang, it was this that part where he said, I'm your biggest hater. Oh, the yeah, uh, yeah. classic, you don't have one. Yeah. I like that part. Yeah, so too. that's the last verse, I think. Okay, yes. Yeah, so and I do verse. like I do like the first verse. Well, uh, after, you know, like superpowers get neutralized. I guess verse yeah, the first verse or whatever. Like I just like how he's like changing like his voice. Like he was saying like uh, he said like uh like Nick fuck, I can't even fucking talk. But like <laughs> I'm it's like the way he like changed like his voice and like right when he says like um he said, like, have you ever uh, played, okay, nigga, let's play. Like, he just got mad serious. Okay, let's play, okay. Yeah, yeah like, I love how he did that. Yeah, so yours just switches every time. And it I really do, does. like, he said, I'm allergic to the lame shit, only you like being famous. Yeah. Like, because I got to feel Y'all like... can't give you no swag, neither. I don't give a fuck about who you hang with. with. Yeah, so I like that one, and then I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk, and the way you dress, and then when he said, like, the classic, you don't have one. Yeah, so that's all the last verse, really. Yeah, so I guess... Or, yeah, the last verse. Yeah. So, but the very beginning, that part it has aged like the best. Like, it's crazy. But well, comment down below your favorite uh, verse. Which is deliberate and very clever as Kendrick plays off one of his hardest lines from Like That. First person shooter, I hope they came with three switches. I crash out. I hope they come with three switches and then he comes with three switches. Like, that's, that's tough. The first beat is important for me to mention as Kendrick samples a track from Teddy Pendergrass. Called You're My Latest, My Greatest Inspiration. More beautiful than the Mona Lisa. Now, I've seen some outrageous rumors being spread that That's Teddy Pendergrass I mean. had previous allegations of messing with kids that are not only completely unsubstantiated, but documented absolutely <laughs> nowhere. While my primary focus is breaking down this yeah, record, Drake in doing this, I feel obligated to That's point out Drake things that are just blatantly untrue. Rumors about and look, I know Teddy had his fair share of scandals, but to just be pulling this information out of your ass and throwing it up online, especially when it comes to claims like this, like you should probably stop doing that. However, interestingly Bro. enough, Teddy covered a song by Drake's uncle, Larry Graham, who is a Hall of Fame inducted musician. Now, you can best believe that this is not a coincidence and there's a deeper meaning behind the use of this sample. Hmm. I'm just unclear of what that could be. Outside of that, Teddy Pendergrass did get in a car accident which left him paralyzed in a wheelchair, just like the character that Drake played on Degrassi. Dang. And Drake's uncle has an accolade that is better than any award or plaque, any of that shit. Like, he's known for inventing the slap technique of the bass. Like, that is crazy, bro. Kendrick that. starts out well, the track with a small intro yeah, that has an excerpt played in reverse great, like, from the Drake 1978 from film, The Wiz. Euphoria. The film reimagines the 1900 novel in 1939. So it's crazy to think Drake did come from music. But he just wasn't raised around it. Well, I can't say that. Like, like I don't know the, how he really was raised. The rap, like the hood. I think that's just the issue. Yeah, that's Drake. really. Yeah, that's it's the, just he keeps trying to portray himself as a. Some days not. Yeah, it yeah. was fine. Like, like that one person comment said, like Drake was really a pop star, and I think I do remember them yeah, seeing that's it when he came out, yeah. and then all of a sudden it switched to a rapper. Yeah. I think because when he said that, that shit just reminded me back. Now. I'm like, I think that was. Like he had like little raps in between, like, like in between like the melodies. Then like, as time went on, like that's when the raps became like, oh, like I'm like the toughest nigga. Like me, and, like my niggas like shoot and like yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I it's think like, he was what? trying to fit into the crowd. Yeah, like on some high school shit. Yeah. Like he was trying to fit into the crowd and then, like, hey, the crowd let him in. He got lost. He got lost in the. Uh, he got lost in the sauce. Yeah, in lost the industry in, for real. He like, got lost in it and then. Now he's here. Now he's so here, it's yeah. crazy to say. So I know I don't like Drake, and I don't think I'm ever gonna like him. That's just me. <laughs> but like, well, when it comes to music, I do try to give him his. I mean, you gotta give him his respect. I do you give do. him his respect sometimes when I'm on my good mood. But um, <laughs> if I feel like it, you know. Yeah. But music-wise, okay, he grew up in it, but it's just like you didn't have to take this like tough route like basically what Kendrick great, said like I just like when you sing melodies I don't like when you act tough yeah yeah I just I didn't like that either and I think yeah. that's where everybody's kind of like man you just corny yeah I mean but people people been felt that way for like years like right. I remember like in school like maybe like they're like middle school everybody was talking with Drake I remember like going to high school 
nobody really was messing with Drake because like <laughs> everyone saw like he was just like pretending. Yeah, real. so yeah, it's been like this for a very long time. So yeah. Yeah. Um, the Wizard of Oz, in like the perspective yeah, of African Americans, right Kendrick one. uses this to symbolize that what he's about to craft is for the culture, something he believes Drake simply isn't a part of. He really drives this home as in the context of this movie, Kendrick is comparing Drake to the wizard who is played by Richard Pryor. Pryor's wizard is initially looked at as so someone long. who is feared and respected. He uses technology and trickery to maintain his illusion of power but is soon discovered to be a fraud. <laughs> this goes back to Kendrick and removing the costume from Drake's character. The wizard is exposed when the blanket is pulled back, revealing that he's not powerful at all, and manipulated people into believing that he was. Phony! <laughs> I'm sorry! Phony. Everything you say about me is true! I'm a phony! I'm a phony! I got no, I got no right to be pretending to be the wizard! <laughs> Much like the wizard, Kendrick <laughs> looks at Drake as someone who uses industry connections, fame, collaborations, fashion, hairstyle, and yeah. even technology like social media to fool people into believing that he is a person of the culture. And also, if you want to get real deep with Drake, when he, I don't know if it's in this video or it was a video before, when Drake said, like, back then when he was in high school, he was an outcast. Yeah. So he was, you know, he couldn't fit in. So it's just like, imagine you getting to the music industry and you getting all this attention, something that you never had. Yeah. That's, that's gonna, what's going on with Drake now. Yeah, that's why he, shows, act, that's so why he moved. Yeah, sure. that's why he moving the way he moved because yeah. he's, he wanted this his whole life. He did. I mean. Because he didn't have it in high school. I'm telling you, like high it. school be the fucking prime, <laughs> like not prime, but it's like the mode of everything of why you, like why, like why, like you are, like who you are. Yeah, like that's just where it started, and that's how he was. He was, he was an outcast. He, I don't like, know, he yeah. it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Like Drake, like the white people didn't accept him because he's black, and the black people didn't accept him because he's white. So he like, had he's sex, mixed. So yeah. he, he wanted he, approval. Yeah, he uh, was always like the outcast. Approval. He, yeah, he wanted approval, like he, Kendrick says. So. He wanted to be accepted all the time. Yeah. And so he had a big issue. So imagine you get into the industry where all the money girls come out. Pow, yeah. pow, pow. So of course he would get lost in that shit because he never had it. Yeah. So that's why now this is just the end of his <laughs> euphoria. I guess. <laughs> Basically, well, that's this is the, well, this yeah. is just the beginning. Well, yeah. With this song, with yeah. this song it was. Yeah. Everything you say about me is true. When I'm brought back to its original form, the line is extremely important to the overall theme of this record. Everything they say about me is true, the key word being they. Mm. As you'll see later in this record, Kendrick does not present much new information with respect to Drake, mostly reciting pre-existing things that people have already said within the culture, aka things that they said. By not but this is quite literally Kendrick's entire strategy with this record. Basically, Kendrick is demonstrating that Drake has been exposed so many times yeah. that he doesn't even need to reveal anything new as he packages all the already existing info and presents it as being more than enough to remove Drake's costume. Mm. So it's critical to point out that in the phrase, everything they say about me is true, the term they is representing the culture that is hip hop. So all that right there is the framework and entire setup of the theme of this record, mm. literally. Another work, obvious man. meaning behind Kendrick's choice of quoting the Wiz okay. is the Bro. fact that it is an African-American cult classic, which is likely what Kendrick watched as a child. Whereas someone like Drake, growing up with a white mother, probably only watched the original Wizard of Oz, which had no black actors whatsoever. Them superpowers get neutralized, I can only watch in silence. Kendrick starts out the disc claiming that Drake's superpowers have been neutralized while he watches in silence. Circling back to the Kill Bill reference, as I've stated already, superpowers being neutralized alludes to Drake's costume being removed, exposing the frog beneath <laughs> right. The line about watching in silence perfectly ties into the quote from The Wiz, where Kendrick is essentially saying that he doesn't even need to speak, all he needs to do is sit back in silence, as Drake's alter ego unravels by itself through everything that they, What's the culture, happening? says about him. DMX pointed out years wrong. ago that Drake was a fraud. Meek Mill exposed Drake for ghostwriters. Pusha T exposed Drake for being in blackface and hotting a child. 
Joe Budden alluded to underage women claims. Rick Ross painted Drake as a cultural outsider that had plastic surgery. Tupac's estate disapproved of Drake's use of an AI Tupac, and over the years the culture in itself has added even more into the mix. When it comes to Drake and a culture that is hip-hop, the people within it have already neutralized Drake's superpower. Okay, so, I was, I'm thinking, like, they, uh, you know how, we know how, who Drake really is, he's an actor in Degrassi, and that's when everybody was really fucking with him, like, yeah. or whatever. So now I just wonder if now, you, this is, you want thin iron, so it's like, will you just be honest now, like, with yourself? Like, would y'all still, like, respect him if he just been honest, like, yeah, you know what, I was, me, like, would you, would we still fuck with I mean, Drake? I mean, if you really been listening to, like, Drake's music, like, he kind of says it in his music. Like, the Away From Home songs that, like, uh, I be playing. Like, he even said, like, uh, he said, like, I fucking forgot how it went. He basically said, like, he was never gangster till now. Okay. Like, he said he was, like, living on a cloud. He was quiet as a mouse. Like, he even, like, said, like, and, like, in that song, like, he even said, like, back in the day, like, he used to act like he smoked black and mild. Just to, like, he was acting like he was, like... Smoking, but yeah. he, he never was. Like he was faking it. Blacks. Okay. Like he faked it. Okay, so I just wonder, like, if he in this, if, which I don't think it's over, but in this, that, well, I don't know if you can. Yeah. You got like predator, like pedophile, you know, PDF allegations on you. But I'm just saying, like, if he was just being honest about you just being a cult, like, you know, you just he trying to, admit not to a, I, exactly, but That's I'm just great. saying, but what if he did just be honest about it, say, yeah, I do, so what y'all gonna do about it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he just, stood, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, or mean. the other, like, stuff that he be doing, like, like saying like yeah I am like I'm a phobie like if yeah. you be honest like that's what I'm saying <laughs> like just think about it though yeah. I, it's never gonna happen because he has a big yeah, ego I'm, I'm but I'm that. just saying yeah, like what, what if though like I mean, would, would y'all still respect him for it or y'all be like you know what he actually honest like because we all want somebody who's honest yeah cause I'm just saying I'll, so would y'all change our mind about it that's a good question because I mean really? it's like I would respect him but then again it's like. Like, it just tarnishes, like, your whole career, in my opinion. Exactly. But it's like, I respect you for actually being straight up and being honest, but, yeah. It's just it a changes. whole lot that come with it. it. But it, that's just my question. Y'all can answer it, too. Like, what y'all still respect if he just been... Because Kendrick, honest. that's what he don't fuck with him about, because he's not being honest and not yeah. being real. He's just being, um... A phony. Pretentious. Yes, yeah. he's being pretentious. So, if he just be like, you know what, if he be real with himself and be a man... Yeah. That's basically what Kendrick's trying to say. Like he's still a little boy. He still can't For be a man up man up to it. So would he if he just man up and just be honest and be like, Yeah, that shit is true. I know he probably would take an ill or we take a W at the same time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. I catch my dream. I mean yeah, like Kendrick said, he said to call you the boy, but where's the man? I ain't seen him yet. That's so what I'm I... saying. Like if he just be honest, cause Kendrick was honest yeah, about Kendrick, him, you know, him with and his, his girl. girl. And yeah. we all respect him still. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, but he is just with Drake. It's like yeah. I don't know, but I'm just saying like that's would y'all that's for y'all to Yeah, to would y'all accept respect him if he was honest about that basically? On their own. You'll also notice that everything I just mentioned are all things that Kendrick makes reference to on this track. The famous actor we once knew is looking paranoid and now spiraling. So right off rip, in the second line, Kendrick begins to chip away at Drake's hip-hop persona. This line is not just directed at Drake for being an actor on the grassy, but as an actor within the culture that is hip-hop. You're moving just like a degenerate, heavy antique is feeling distasteful. This line acts as a double entendre where one, Kendrick refers to Drake as a degenerate, likely due to his internet antics and the way that he moves in general. He seemingly supports this further by labeling Drake's AI diss as a distasteful cheap gimmick. And secondly, he is watching Drake's career degenerate, meaning to downgrade in terms of quality and how it's being perceived. That is a fact. To me personally, Drake, his music fell off for me. It fell off for me twice, I would say that. Because when Views came out, I remember like when that shit dropped, I remember everybody was freaking out. I was like, man, this shit kind of mid, in my opinion. As time went on, it aged better. But after some views, that's when he kind of fell off to me a little bit. I don't know what came after views. It was more life, then it was Scorpion, then 
Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I will say after Scorpion, he kind of fell off again. You know, like that's what kind of led to like all this music, like now. Yeah, because I'll be real with but you. But Darkling Demon Tapes was pretty good though. Because I'm telling you that my favorite album that he dropped was nothing was the same. That was like, yeah, that wild. was like his peak. His peak for real. His peak for sure. I guess Views was his, like his peak too. I'm saying, he had some shit on that one, man. But her. Yeah. But yeah, y'all comment down below. When did Drake fall off for you? Or unless like he just never fell off then, eh? Mm, yeah. I can make you not as calculated. I can even predict your angle. So first and foremost, Kendrick uses a play on words in a mathematic setting, referencing calculations and angles. Furthermore, he paints Drake as someone who is not as calculated as he might believe, claiming that he can predict his every move, which is exactly what he did. He predicted what Drake was going to do on the Family Matters record. Fabricating stories on the family front because you heard Mr. Morale. In the first line, Kendrick alludes to Drake seemingly suggesting on push-ups that Kendrick's wife might have been unfaithful. Kendrick addressed his infidelity on his previous project, and he is insinuating that Drake is pulling these claims out of his ass based on that info. A pathetic master manipulator, how can smell the tales on you now? Kendrick is basically claiming that Drake is twisting the truth to fit a narrative that the masses will likely run with, and that he can already smell the bullshit coming. You're not a rap artist, you're a scam artist with the hopes of being accepted. Yeah. Following the theme of the record, Kendrick mm. continues to drive home that Drake is simply not the person who he appears to be by claiming that Drake is desperate to be accepted and that he fabricated a persona to make that happen. Drake claims he wasn't cool in high school. You know, it was, um, I just always felt like an outsider. I, I went, Tommy Hill figure stood out, but FUBU never had been your collection. Kendra claims that Drake is far more Tommy Hill figure, a brand that is far more common in a white man's wardrobe. <laughs> Furthermore, allegations were made years ago that Tommy Hill figure was racist, not approving of different ethnicities wearing his brand. For the record, this has been proven not to be true, but it was a narrative back in the day. Kendra claims that Drake never had any FUBU in his collection, which is a masterful line in itself, truly helping to drive home Ooh, the approach boom. with this record. FUBU is a black owned company with the slogan, for us, by us, but more importantly, FUBU is very much a hip hop company. FUBU, clothes got mass appeal. They the best that ever did it. I'm just keeping it real. What Kendrick is really trying to drive home here is that just like FUBU, Hip hop is a culture that is for the people, by the people, and that is something that Drake has no ties to, as he is an outsider. Kendra could well, also be referring to a fairly recent picture of Drake right. wearing FUBU, and I couldn't <laughs> find <laughs> any other pictures right. in existence where he's doing that. <laughs> now again, to be fair, which I am, Drake posted a drawing that he did from when he was a kid. It was like a cat or something, and it was wearing a FUBU hat. So he obviously knew about the brand from a but did he wear it his, his mom was not letting that slide in the trail. But did he wear it though? Kendrick points out that his music electrifies people. What he means by this is his music requires people to think as the brain generates electrical activity when it processes thoughts. This diss record in itself is proof of just how layered his music can get. Kendrick creates music about real world issues in a very poetic way that involves a great deal of comprehension. In the case of Drake, he claims that he makes music that pacifies them. Now, when we look at the definition of pacify, it is to cause someone who is angry or upset to be calm and satisfied. This hmm. is very... That is true, because that is like the main thing that kind of really got people to like really connect with Drake. Oh, and for me, it felt like it was like Marvin's Room, like when that song came out. It oh, felt like that's when everybody really was like on yes, Drake. Yes, that song was everywhere. You know, it's kind of like a heartbreak song, whatever, and people could relate to it. I'm upset about that. But yeah. yeah, like, uh, yeah, that shit was everywhere. Everybody remixed it. It's Chris a good song. Remixed it. it, JoJo. Yeah. There's some more people, yeah. Like, that was, yeah. So, yeah, Drake, he does make pacified music, for real. He's trying, to, he's trying to make you feel calm and. He basically trying to change, like, your mood. That's basically, like, all it is. Right, he was trying to get all sexy and shit. It's like, bro, we ain't. Yeah. Sometimes we don't want that. <laughs> Not from you. Also, going back to when Drake fell off, when he dropped Hotline Bling, that shit was so weak. Oh, yeah. That shit was weak as fuck. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care how big the song is. That song is trash. It is trash. Important because Kendrick makes music to unite and empower his people. As we've seen in the past, 
protesters literally use his lyrics to make a statement. When we look at the subject matter in a lot of Drake's music, he is making the people do the opposite calming them down by not evoking much thought at all, Daddy making too. them happy Daddy and too. pacifying Daddy them. Too. And this line again went over heads, like people were thinking that he was calling Drake's music sleepy, like that that's not what that means. It's sleepy. way deeper than that. that However, the line one. also Better offers up another meaning, feeding into the claims of Drake being involved with younger women, as pacify could be in reference to a pacifier. This is further supported by Kendra claiming that he could double down on the line, but in this case, he spared him. Kendrick then, for the second time, calls Drake a master manipulator, and just like in the Kill Bill reference from earlier, he claims that Drake is a habitual liar. You are truly and utterly incapable of telling the truth, especially to me. It's a genius chess move because he gave himself a, a bit of a safety net, and now we've been hearing the people talk like, oh, Drake's a liar. Kendrick, Kendrick said he was going to lie. That's what he's doing. He then makes reference to his own lyrics from the Heart Part 4. But don't tell no lie about me, and I won't tell truth about you. Don't tell a lie on me, I won't tell the truth about you. Mm. This is another really clever reference, as that, many believe that it was on that track where Kendrick took aim at both Big Sean and Drake. The key word being truths, plural. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have more than one thing on you. Mm. Kendrick then hits Drake with a nasty beat switch. When I'm driving in the car and like this beat drops, my foot just gets real heavy on the gas. Like I'll start, It'll I start like speeding. Hey, I'm out the way, I'm low, okay. You're the island right here is remote, okay. Kendrick plays into the narrative that oh, Cole wait. and Drake cultivated on. He said the island is remote. Hey, remote island. Oh, okay. I was thinking like. It's like Epstein or something. Some shit like that. No, I don't I was that. like, oh. Okay. He just flexing. This okay. is that Kendrick That's is laying low me. and not selling as well as he used to. The line is also a reference to Kendrick being low in terms of his height, which is something that Drake height. continues to play on. He ain't thinking about no reaper, nigga. I'm reaping what I sow, okay? So as I said before, there was no way that J. Cole was coming to edit this thing on scathe, oh, and Kendrick proves this to be correct as he has some more bars for Cole here. I don't think any of us could forget J. Cole's verse on well, Johnny P. Well, he he really was from J. Cole right there. Because the Reaper, reaping what I saw. Yeah. That's... We'll, we'll get to it. Daddy. Nigga want me on the song, he gonna see the wrath of the Reaper. It was in this mm. verse where J. Cole really started to reshape the narrative of who was the best, and Kendrick takes the chance to flip one of Cole's hardest lines to make it clear that J. The Cole is not the, the Reaper, Reaper, and unlike Cole, who apologized, Kendrick was going to follow through in his beef, reaping what he sowed. Mm. I said this two months ago. I thought that J. Cole was taking shots at Kendrick on Johnny P's caddy. I do think I didn't, he I is think that. talking that's to someone, that. and that J. someone, Cole? I yeah. feel like, is Kendrick Lamar. And Kendrick thought the same thing. I mean, there's a reason why he's referencing that record in particular. He got a Benjamin and a Jackson all in my house like I'm Joe K. Uh, so Cole's Kendrick really starts to put his yeah, hand on display. Shit, I guess. He makes reference to Benjamins and Jacksons, alluding to how he has plenty of money. This is likely a rebuttal to Drake's claims on push-ups regarding Kendrick's contract splits. However, the line is also in reference to Joe Jackson, who is Michael Jackson's father, and it's interesting to note that Michael Jackson also had a pet rat named Ben. Michael Jackson was weird from the jump. Hey, in this beef, the Michael hairy. Jackson yeah, Prince yeah, thing just gets boy. flipped and rebuttaled over and over again, and in this case, he's either calling Drake a rat, or someone in his team a rat, or both. There are multiple layers to this line alone. Kendrick brings up the Hellcat, which is a sports car trim for Dodge, but also by definition, a Hellcat is a spiteful, violent woman. <laughs> Kendrick clearly never plays with the word crazy. hell, I never knew that making either. it seem that Drake That's and his wild. associates all sold their soul while simultaneously calling Drake a bitch. That's but in the crazy. next line, there's even more layers. Everybody wanna be demon till they get chipped by your throwaway. Kendrick continues the clever yeah, wordplay with like his that, usage of the word that. demon, as the demon is a trim level above the Hellcat for Dodge cars. The use of the word chipped refers to the demon being chipped out so that it has specific programming tailored to its performance. 
Kendrick also uses the word demon as a play on Future's middle name, Demon, and references one of Future's tracks, Throwaway. Go on, pet that puppy, get it over with. I always change the lyrics and sing that song to my dog. And being chipped yeah, by a throwaway is also anyway. a reference to being taken out by a gun, as when you commit a crime with a pistol, you throw away the piece to eliminate any evidence. Yeah. Furthermore, being chipped by a throwaway is also in reference to Kendrick's track Like That, which is what sparked this entire thing. And what's even more nuts is that the Like That track was Future's record, the guy that he already referenced within the line. Kendrick is essentially saying that the verse that shook the world was a throwaway verse, it was effortless, and it was nothing for him to do. However, while on the topic of future and throwaways, a throwaway is also a woman that you just hit and toss to the side. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, future yeah. accused Drake of pillow talking, talk like oh, so it's no. very possible that the woman that Drake trusted to share secrets with was one of Future's throwaways, so therefore, mm. oh. he got chipped by a throwaway. Dang. But the line is even crazier Holy than that. Geez. I need you guys to remember Drake's recent track with J. Cole called Evil Way. In our video, um, we, we, like, we basically talked about like the whole beef or whatever. I brung up this song, because they were saying some shit in this song. Mm. As it was on that track, where Cole had subliminals for Kendrick. <laughs> I stay out of beef, see niggas DNA get rearranged. And to make this even more obvious, it's on that exact same track where J. Cole claims that he is going through his demon phase. Yep. I don't see this bar, I think he was talking about Drake, because Drake's nickname is like Young Angel. I remember him him a little Wayne, they said like Young Angel, Young Lion or whatever like that. Because of Drake's Young Angel, right. Little Wayne's Young Lion or whatever. And so I thought he was talking about Drake, young angel going through his demon phase. I thought he was trying to because say Drake is Drake going. Is yeah. trying to be on his demon yeah. phase. Yeah, so I think that bar is about crazy Drake. Crazy that Jake Cole was. <laughs> he was actually being a real homie to Drake. He was trying. It seems like, Jake but he was Cole. talking crazy. Jake Cole, he was talking crazy too. That's why that's he was losing sleep. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Who knows how long? Who knows how long he was like he been like losing sleep. That's what I'm. That's what. Yeah. That's what makes it mind blowing. Yeah. Cause how long were you losing sleep though? Cause you've been taking shots at Kendrick. Yeah. Then you dropped the, the real disc. Yeah. yeah, and then you back out of it. Like Jay. <clears throat> oh J Cole, man. I mean, you still one of the greats to me. Like, but come on, bro. But well, all the people that were saying, "Oh, J Cole, he's just you know, he's humble. Right, he's humble." Please. That nigga was shooting shots. He I just mean, got yeah, humble. I mean, yeah. By. Another humble Nick <laughs> that will really humble him and check him. Yeah. Like saying like, oh he is no, he be Jacob begin like that too. Well, I guess not really. If you uh, y'all listen to Red Leather on uh, Future and uh Metro, uh, we still don't trust you the second album. Uh J. Cole he basically said like he said like what he said when the blitz get the blast and I turn into a track star. Mm. It's basically sound like when the gun start blasting, like I'm up out of there. Like mm. he and like in that song he basically said like he not like no tough guy. So. Unless he was, who was this then? <laughs> Unless this was know. supposed to be just a friendly beef. I don't know. We also gotta think, we gotta remember J. Cole is dropping an album called like The Fall Off. So it's like, who knows what J. Cole really trying to do. <laughs> so. Angel going through his demon phase. So when Kendrick says everybody want to yeah, be a demon until they get chipped by a throwaway, that's a bullet for both Drake and J. Cole. In the case of Drake, he ended off his push-ups track by claiming not to wake the demon up. This ain't even everything I know, don't wake the demon up. In the case of J. Cole, he, he claimed to be in his demon <laughs> face, but Boyd literally that got that chipped thing. by a throwaway no heart, but... when he got entirely bent at his shape and apologized for his diss that Kendrick didn't even open his mouth for and then proceeded to delete it. J. Cole's diss was a throwaway. He fucking deleted it. Everyone clowned him for it. You got chipped by a throwaway. <laughs> Everybody wanna be demon and they get chipped by a throwaway. This is extremely Damn, high level writing. Like that line is fucking nuts. And I might do a show a day. What's a name? Always a lame. In the first line, Kendra claims that he might do a show a day. Possibly referencing up. J. Cole's yeah, diss when he said jumping. this. And he's still doing shows, but fell off like The Simpsons. The Simpsons has 765 so episodes, yeah. and still to this day, still TV channels are playing their episodes daily. Kendrick is claiming that like The Simpsons, he could also do a show every single day, 
and likely even sell it out. So I'm hoping you yeah, guys can see the theme King now in verse one, where these last yeah, it's, like, it's like a hundred K people like Drake, waiting to like Jake buy Cole tickets. Well. Oh, oh, you got the money, the power of fame will make you go away. Yeah. The next sequence of lines is directed at Drake, claiming that Drake has always been a loser. Yeah. And even after all the money, power, and fame, That's he's still the same saying. person. The line is also a callback to his verse on Like That, where too. instead of the word fame, oh, yeah, he yeah, uses yeah. the word respect. B.O.T. The money, power, respect. The last one is better. Kendrick deliberately changes the words man, to reference big, Drake's man. confusion of thinking that fame amounts to respect, when in fact they are two different things. Have you ever played? Have you ever? Okay, nigga, let's play. Kendrick then goes into a game of Have You Ever, oh, okay, I but I also have see this approach as Kendrick okay, framing go. the questions hmm. somewhat like a therapy Never session. Have, have you right. ever watch your enemy down like with a poker face? Kendrick's reason for doing this is to highlight the cultural differences between them. Imagine Drake and Kendrick are playing a game of Have You Ever, <laughs> where the questions are all about things Kendrick witnessed or was directly involved with growing up. Drake probably wouldn't have much to say because he can't relate to Kendrick's experiences. Have you ever paid 500 down like to an open case? In the second line, he alludes to Drake having to pay $500,000 to a woman that accused him of sexual assault. And I know the article says 350K, but when you transfer that into our shitty Canadian dollar, it's pretty close. I hate when I rap or talk about guns that somebody died, they turn into none. Again, there are a lot of cultural references layered within this track, and Kendrick's approach to lines like this one is to point out the stark differences between himself and Drake. Kendrick has spoken on gun violence in his music before, and does it in a way that is very tactful, pushing to influence change. When we look at an artist like Drake, while he does have some lines that speak on gun violence in a way that could be helpful, he has far more gun-related bars that do the opposite. Then when we look at some of the alleged crimes that are connected to Drake and his inner circle, which could be a whole other video in itself, Kendrick is essentially painting Drake as someone that really doesn't care to make any strides towards change and that when he does speak up, it's more of a PR move. Then I hop online, like pray for my city, he faking for likes and digital hugs. Passed down by elders, people don't even know about them. People don't even know the logistics of, of the beef or... Everybody got a stick, we don't run fast. And look guys, like, uh, there is a theory out there that's claiming these lines are directed at Jay Prince and the death of Takeoff and that's pretty heavy shit. I don't, you guys already know I don't what? do that type of content on the channel. I just kind of keep it to the music. I don't believe it. Alright, so this line is fucking insane and everyone missed some key references. First off, this is a shot towards Drake's actual father, Dennis. Unlike his brother Larry Jr., who had a very successful music career, Drake's dad's career was far more lackluster. So when Kendrick says that he wanted to be like Jr., it's obvious that Dennis wanted a career that was as successful as his older brother, but that just didn't happen. Mm. To add the cherry on top, Drake's grandfather, who went by Larry Sr., was also a musician, so Larry Jr. quite literally took the reins and not Dennis. Then when we look at the fact that Drake's dad has literally tried to ignite his own career by piggybacking off Drake's success, it makes even more sense. Even on his official website, the promotions are not even tagged as Dennis Graham, but as Drake's dad. You gotta hit the like button for that one. Come on. The next reference was also missed by pretty much everyone, and given the fact that I watched The Sopranos in full at least ten times, I caught this one right away. You're gonna listen to me, Christopher. This is a fucking business. Sorry, that's just my favorite show. In The Sopranos, just like his father before him, Tony wanted to be the boss and overtake his Uncle Junior's place. The line about forgetting shit that they say is a reference to Uncle Junior, who constantly begins to forget everything and eventually develops dementia, which is something that Kendrick mentions in the very next line. Mm. Drop a comment for me, come on. Thirdly, Kendrick refers to Birdman as Drake's oh, dad as he was signed that. under him for cash money and oh. Birdman does have a slew of allegations with respect to being a killer. There's quite a few of cash money artists who have just mysteriously been murdered. So in the Birdman Wait, scenario, what? the reference to Junior right. is with respect to Lil Wayne who once literally called Birdman his dad and of course Drake took a lot of influence from Wayne more or less aspiring to be just like him. 
But there's even more to it than that. That's not it. The last reference is to Texas hip-hop legend Jay Prince, someone that Drake considers his mob ties. And in this context, Junior refers to his son, Jay Prince Jr. The line is fucking nuts. Like, it's 16 words that give you four deep meanings that are all very relevant. All in one. It, it's a crazy line. The very first time the homie that told me that he way. This line is one of the more surface level bars. Hmm. Kendrick is referring to shooting a Draco, which is a gun, but also sounds like Drake's name, like he's shooting Drake. I didn't point down enough today. I show you I learned from those mistakes. Lastly, he claims that he needs to aim the gun down, which is in reference to Drake being beneath him. Somebody mm. that told me that you got a ring on God, I'm ready to double the weight. You know, Drake purchased Tupac's <laughs> custom diamond <laughs> ring at an auction for over $1 yeah. million. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a hard bar, now, but I like, what? That's crazy. That's probably like the, I ain't gonna say mediocre bar, but that's probably like the, I don't know, like the right word for it. Mm -hmm. But it's not like as like complex as like these other bars I was there. Oh, okay. Being from the West Coast and a huge fan of Pac, claims he's willing to buy it back from Drake for double the price just so it's not in his possession. Drake not selling that ring. Make Pac turn in his grave. And it's very possible that Drake bought that ring just to be petty. Very possible. Yeah, it is a pretty yeah. clever line because by saying that Pac would turn in his grave over the ring, Kendrick is also insinuating that Pac would have been pissed and would have never approved of Drake's AI gimmick. Cut the finish, you got shit twisted. What, what is, is it, the brains? So again, more cultural references here, as Kendrick continues to chip away at Drake, pegging him as an outsider in the culture. Kendrick asks Drake if he has shit twisted, alluding to Drake's new hairstyle, which is indeed braided. He confirms this even more with the next line when he says, what is it, the braids? Something that I've grown to accept over the years is the, f is the fact that I'm never going to have braids, you know? And I've tough pill to swallow that's tough but i feel like drake's braids are just too tight but he's this not just talking tight. about drake's tight. hairstyle but his own kendrick has been known to rock braids himself and uses this as a reference and cultural construct to highlight just how rooted he is to the culture braids are an integral part of black and african culture the tradition has been passed down through generations to celebrate and honor one's ancestral roots. And most of you guys know this stuff already, but trust me, there are people, people watching don't. this that don't know. Right. Like, they don't know that at one point, people were losing their jobs left, right, and center for just natural black hair. So, and it still happens today. I've seen lawsuits in recent years of, of it still happening, unfortunately. It was in the 1960s where braids and natural hair became a huge thing during the black power movement. It was quite literally used as a statement and as an expression against white supremacy and anti-blackness. So, in the case of Drake as it pertains to this line, Kendrick is painting him as being jealous and envious of what he represents culturally. The braids are only used to reference Kendrick's own identity and his deep-seated roots to African American culture, something that Drake wishes he had and attempts to emulate. He continues to drive this home by claiming that Drake doesn't want to work with him anymore, and it all ties perfectly into the overall theme of this record to further support Drake's longing for acceptance, but never fully getting it. What is it, the brakes? I heard your finish. You don't work with me no more. Okay. <laughs> Everyone that I've seen did not care. Like this right. went over their heads. They were claiming that this line was about Drake's braids only, but it's a it's a far deeper cultural reference than that. Like he's referring to himself in the context of African American culture and what that represents. And again, he's removing the mask from Drake. Like the braids for Drake is part of the costume. Lastly, the line is most That's definitely in reference That's to Kendrick's control verse, where Drake claimed that he didn't want to work with Kendrick after the disc dropped. Does it make you like not want to collab with him? Yeah, I don't I'm good right now, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm just about this album and me and you know, I don't know necessarily if I feel like hundred percent like I'm not like Man, send me some, let's work. Like, nah, not really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's three goes yeah. left, and I see two of them kissing and hugging on stage. Again, J. Cole catches some hurt. bullets along with Drake. Kendrick makes reference to the big three first person shooter and Drake and J. Cole's tour that they did, where they literally hugged on stage. 
And he's also talking about how they act when they bring each other on stage, like as a guest, where J. Cole will be like, Drizzy Drake is in the building, way better than me. This guy's way better than me. And then Drake will be like, I got the goat in the building, J. Cole, his pen, I can't fuck with, way better than me. And like Kendrick's just like, he sounds, he sounds just, just like, like him. Him. <laughs> like, <laughs> Must be like a Canadian like accent it or something. Has, has to be. Tone. Yeah, the tone for sure. What the fuck? Like, uh, I'm not on that type of time. I don't know what these guys are doing. I love them to death, and then eight bars, I'll explain their phrase. <laughs> I really like this line. He claims to love Drake and J. Cole to death, but then proceeds to tell them that he's gonna elaborate more on that in the next eight bars. It's not nobody can tell me. I don't wanna talk on no silly. <laughs> Personally, with this one, I believe he is talking directly to J. Cole, who felt extremely bad about his diss and very likely tried to make contact with Kendrick to try to smooth Please things over. Man, I, I mean, Kendrick is in, <laughs> he's not trying to get it all that make, right it now. He's in a different space, but about J. Cole I think they will end up right. coming together in the near future, and we're finally going to get some music from these guys together. We need another Black Friday, man. We need that. Got language barriers. There's no accent you can sell me. At this point, we have literally heard multiple accents from Drake. There's the UK Drake. Just like that one time at Cello. Good thing, man, we're pulling out phones. The UA Jamaican used Jafakin Drake. And more tune for your head top, so watch how you speak on my name, you know? Team set, the team dead, and trust me, headshot them bomba. Then there's the I Toronto know. accent Drake. You guys made me sick to my stomachs, fam. This didn't exist before we were here. Look around at the square, I promise you right now. Then we got the Caucasian Drake. Just one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. Scrabble champion. Uh, Is she just, really? Yeah, she's just uh, she's a top That's shelf lady. The New York Drake. I try and show out with none of the study. I don't I don't really do what other people do, like, for a true religion. Like, I don't really do that stuff, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> Look, if you're confused, don't worry, because so am I. But here's how he actually talks right here. Ash, forget it. Look, can we just break up and get this over with? And people are gonna say that I'm hating on Drake. I'm not hating on Drake. I'm a massive fan of Drake. But you can't deny that these things exist. Like, this is what Kendrick's talking about, is it not? It was Joe Budden that actually said the exact same thing in one of his disses towards Drake. Say Canadian, maybe Asian, Croatian, be sounding like it's Jamaican friends, depending on what shady is. And look, if we're going to talk about writing and punchlines and quotables and punchables, like this, this taste track from Joe was one of the best Drake disses that we've seen. You're cold and Aubrey, you know, I'm a selfish nigga, the crown is heavy. So again, notice he calls him Aubrey, that is the theme. That's who he's talking to on the record, not Drake. Coming off the Like That track, Kendrick made it clear that he doesn't care about the big three and that he's down to ride solo with The Crown. Now, The Crown, to be specific, has been something that all three of these guys have referenced in their music at one point or another. In the case of J. Cole, aiming at a couple heads, put some crown, honey. Ray at the top, play keep away with the crown. And no different for Drake. Take my crown to the grave, I'm on the crown king. They never told me when you get the crown. It's gonna taste me getting used to. And it was what in this saying? line where Kendrick even quoted himself talking about the crown. Heavy is the head that chose to wear the crown. However, this moment in this era will act as the deciding factor on whose head the crown belongs on, and Kendrick seems to understand the mission as there's no friends when it comes to his end goal. He really drives this home with the YNW Melly reference, where Melly was accused of murdering his own friend. I pray they my real friends, if not I'm YNW Melly. What's also That's interesting to wrong. note is that YNW Melly not, took to Instagram a month ago YNW. to make claims that he felt Kendrick took shots at him on the Like That record. I don't see the connection. Like To me, this line is clearly about Melly Mel, but he does mention his name on this record. I don't like you popping shit in for real, but he'll mind every the beef. You fuck all that pushy pee. Let me see you push a tee. Drake sent subliminal like shots at Pharrell like in 2023 on Travis Scott's meltdown. Now, I'm not going to break down his shots towards Pharrell in this video because that so would be like, off topic. Down change, you but I do believe the true reason for the tension is because of Pharrell's production work on Pusha T's last album. Good album. So Pusha's last album had 12 tracks on it, and 8 of them were produced by Pharrell. And it's one of my favorite albums of the last four or five years. Amazing album. Kendrick claims that he's got no issue inheriting the beef on Pharrell's behalf, telling Drake to stop pushing P, meaning leave Pharrell alone. The phrase is also, of course, something that was popularized by Gunna through his hit record, Pushing P. 
I'm push P. However, the line holds even more depth as Drake referenced the phrase in a song himself. Push P, To explain a little better, the phrase push him. That was a hard Drake bar at the time. I really, hopefully he wrote it. Oh, that would be crazy. Hopefully he wrote it because that actually was a good bar. He basically means keeping a player acting with integrity whilst staying successful. In this scenario, Kendrick tells Drake to forget about the integrity and hits Drake in a sore spot by bringing up his infamous loss to Pusha T. Drake allegedly had a career ending red button diss for Pusha to which J Prince shut down as he said Drake was taking it too far. You know, my reasons for pulling the plug and having that conversation with him simply because it, it crossed the line of music. So in Why the case of his beef with Pusha, Drake more or less sleep. took the high road, maintaining integrity, which is technically push and pee. However, I also feel the words, let me see you push a T, has a couple meanings. One, he's clowning Drake regarding his loss to Pusha and egging him on to clear up unfinished business. And two, okay. he's asking Drake to push the red button on that track that he held back because of Jay Prince. Drake's been talking about his red button for a while. Really I, I don't think he has one for Kendrick, but I think he has, I think he's got something for Kanye and Pusha. You better have spinning again on him. You think about pushing me. He's Terrence Thorne, I'm Terrence Crawford. Yeah, I'm whooping feet. Mm. Again, Kendrick brings up Drake's unfinished business with Pusha T, alluding to the L that he took. He then uses Pusha's real name, Terrence Thornton. And while he does clearly acknowledge that Pusha is dope, he claims that he's a far more deadly competitor, calling himself Terrence Crawford, who is an undefeated boxer. I found it pretty funny because in that clip of him training, Drake's music is playing in the background. We ain't gotta get personal, this a friendly face, you should keep it there. That is true, and in the background, Drake said niggas wanna be friends. Uh, ironic. That's crazy. <laughs> I know some shit about niggas that make gonna wanna look like a saint. Kendrick begins to warn Drake and recommend that he should keep this battle light, but then he uses Gunna's reputation as a snitch to imply that Drake that is an snitch. even bigger rat. This ain't been about critics, not about gimmicks, not about who the greatest is. Always been about love and hate. Now let me say I'm the biggest hater. Kendrick claims that at this point, this thing is not even about who's the greatest. It's about his hatred for Drake which is exactly what I said five months ago before any of this was even close to what we're seeing now. Mm. I've said it multiple times on this channel. Like he just right. does not like I'm Drake. Kendrick then goes into an all out hate Drake rant. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk, I hate the way that you dress. Yeah, so like again, button. as I mentioned before, the theme of this record for Kendrick is to bring up things that other people in the culture have said, and in this case, He's referencing DMX's thoughts about Drake. Why don't you like Drake? I don't like anything about Drake. <laughs> Mama, I don't like anything about Drake. Voice. I don't like that. Damn it. He talks about, I don't, I don't talk. I be trying to tell these people. I don't like the way he walks like nothing. I don't care. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I just this gonna be direct. We At first, right. this line confused right. me because Kendrick is known to sneak this himself. But the more I thought about it, he says he hates the way that Drake sneak disses. When it comes to Kendrick and sending shots, his subliminals are usually caught by everyone right away as he makes it pretty obvious who he's talking to. However, in the case of Drake, he goes about it in an entirely different way where he, he sneak disses people to the point where only he his look mad weird target doing that. picks weird. up on it. Kendrick likely well, despises this again. approach mm. because it he's limits like, being able to <laughs> respond <laughs> To where the people would even understand where it originated from. He hate the bitches you fuck cause they confuse themselves with real women. Kendrick then takes a shot at Drake for the women that he sleeps with. This could be in reference to him being involved with younger females. Or the Trans. fact that Drake likely sleeps with the fakest, dumbest, self-absorbed women right. imaginable. Very ruthless and it direct could. line from it Kendrick, could, just like the line from the Wiz, everything they girls. say about me is true. I was thinking a girl with like fake bodies, like they yeah. got baby L's and stuff. But I mean I'm pretty sure Drake he probably did get he probably did get caught up with the trans. Didn't even know. Yeah. Cause, oh, he said he like women all in between. Yeah, he said like he said uh, vanilla cream. What did he say? Cause um uh, he said uh he said what you mean you don't like the woman I be with? He said I've been with black, white, and everything in between. So I don't know. He he might have been with a trans. You never he know. Probably got a little spicy. 
Yeah. <laughs> and just like the Kill Bill theory, Kendrick is dishing what out what he feels to be undisputed truths. I call it the undisputed truth. Now, when he says, I'm what the cults are feeling, it has two meanings where one, the culture agrees with what he's saying on this record, and two, the culture is literally feeling Kendrick as they have embraced him as the face to carry the genre. How many more fairy tale stories about your life till we had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel that you're black enough? That's what Kendrick starts to lay it on heavy and begins to deconstruct Drake's character. OD he references him. fairy tales he about that. his life, which is most definitely regarding the subject matter of Drake's music over the years, where he tends to personify a tough guy act. He then questions Drake on how many black features does he need, which has a great deal of depth culturally. If we look at black art throughout history, the white man has been guilty of profiting, stealing, yeah. and claiming things as their own. Yeah. Still do. Not only Still is Kendrick claiming that Drake hops from wave to wave to gain notoriety, he's strategically lumping him in with what is commonly done by outsiders and executives who use people in the culture for their own benefit. On one of Joe Budden's disses to Drake, he broke this down really well. You leverage your celeb taking waves over that territory you take over. So right away, this is exactly what Kendrick's talking about. Maybe you think nobody notices. Gucci wasn't home two seconds before you wrote his dick. Gucci mm. gets out of jail, Drake does a feature right away. Body Versace flows, copy that she stole. I am real sorry, me go shot. Is this off his, uh, uh this is East Atlanta Center? Is that on there? It might have been before that. I remember they had a remix, I remember they had Lil Wayne on there. I'm trying to remember the song. That song was everywhere. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I don't I cannot that. remember. Somebody will comment down below. Yeah. He hops on the Versace beat, copies that Migos flow, he and did, then he did, doesn't yeah. work with the Migos till years later. Was that your plot all along? Why you ain't do that bitch with Fetty, but you hopped in the song? So he did the song mm. with Fetty. Didn't do the video, do and then he just ghosted them. Sound like a zombie on a track. We started from the bottom, it was zombie on a track. No, who else started from the bottom, zombie on a track. How come after that joint, I don't see zombie on a track? So, Mike Zombie is a producer oh. that made the start it from the bottom beat, but after that mm. track, Drake never worked with them again. He wasn't a well known producer, and from what I can remember, Drake got the beat for an extremely cheap price. Damn. It's a story as old as time. Like, a lot of people have taken interest in black art, but then they take very little interest in the well-beings of the people who are making the art. And Joe made Damn. four different diss tracks towards Drake, and when all this beef cools down, I'm going to be breaking down those records because Joe was an amazing writer, and he deserves to have that highlighted. And the reason why Drake didn't respond to Joe is not because he wasn't worthy of a response. It was because he knew not to. He knew it was a bad idea. You gonna make a nigga bring back Puff. Let me see if Chubbs really crashed on Yeah, my first one, like my last one. It's a classic. You don't have one. Kendrick brings it mm. back to when P. Diddy allegedly Chills. punched Drake <laughs> in the face and claims he's about to do the same. He then mentions Drake's longtime friend and bodyguard Chubbs, who was likely with Drake Chubbs. the night that Diddy punched him, he and because does. it was Diddy, he probably didn't do shit about it. Kendrick then gets into the debate about classic albums claiming that his first album and his last album were both classics. It's in this line where he cleverly snipes both Cole and Drake at the same time, as they both criticize Kendrick's catalog as of late. Your first shit was classic, your last shit was tragic, your last one break, you really not on shit. Kendrick claims that both Drake and J. Cole have no classic albums, and because this is entirely subjective, I do agree that Good Kid Mad City and Mr. Morrell are both classics. A lot of people didn't like Mr. Morrell, but I think it will prove to age as a body of work yeah, that will be appreciated so with more Can't time. Mm -hmm. And that's just my opinion. I mean, like, all these albums are going to connect with people differently. Let your core audience stomach that. Didn't tell them where you get your abs from. Kendrick uses a play on words to reference Drake allegedly getting work this done really to sculpt his abs. Bro. Kendrick uses this wordplay to symbolize that Drake's core audience is not that of actual hip-hop fans. No. And of course, just Dang. like his stomach, he's a fake person with fake music. And I know people are saying, well, like, what's the big deal? He got work done. I agree. I don't think it's a big deal. But in the context of hip-hop, it's just not something we've ever seen done before or be exposed. Like, it's just, it's not a hip-hop type of thing to do. I think it's just a fact... 
when people get like their body done, I just hate like, I hate like Drake gets like his abs done, then he starts posting videos of like him in like the gym. It's like, bro, like you, yeah, like you not do that. A lot of people. A lot of, do that. A lot of females they do that. Like whenever they, they get like BBLs, next you know they're doing out. like squats, they flipping tires over. I'm like, come on, like bro. why can't you can do that for real? For real? <laughs> exactly. Like you could. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a fast one. Last one. Coming off the last line, Kendrick references a plastic really surgery this. machine called the V12, and of course, it's obviously a reference to an engine found in sports cars. Headshot for the year. You, you better, better walk, walk around, around like Daft Punk. Remember? Just think about it. Not like us. It's Number one dope. on the charts right now. Not going anywhere. Headshot for a fucking year. That record was already done at this point. Yeah. Waiting and ready. Kendrick tells Drake mm -hmm. that he's coming with a headshot that will leave him so embarrassed that he will be ashamed to be seen in public. He does this by making a reference to Daft Punk as they wear a masked helmet which completely conceals their identity. It's that. also important to note that Drake sat Daft Punk on one of his recent hits. One more time, you gotta run a face. Mm. On oh. to verse two. Remember? Kendrick starts off by reciting Drake's oh, track Worst Behavior, where the premise of that entire song Damn. is Drake Damn. highlighting how he was never embraced, how people counted him out, and he's basically reminding those people of who he is today. Never remember? The record is basically an in-your-face moment for Drake. Like, remember me? Remember how you treated me? Now look at me. It's a very clever callback from Kendrick as it highlights what he's been saying on this track. Drake was looked at as an outsider, but when artists realized that he could be used as a means of pushing their careers further, like getting a Drake feature, they started to embrace him. Hey, top dog, who the fuck they think they playing with? Extortion my middle name as soon as you jump off of that plane, bitch. Just like every good diss track, Kendrick is rebuttaling Drake's narratives from push-ups. One of the main components of that diss, right down to the hook and the title, was directly tied to Kendrick allegedly being extorted by TDE. I'm allergic to the lame shit, only you like being famous. Yaddy King D and no swag neither. I don't give a fuck about what you ain't with. When we really sit back and think about this thing, Kendrick and Drake couldn't be more different. These guys are literally polar opposites. Really Not just are. in music that they make, but in the way. It's funny, he said polar opposites. <clears throat> Drake has a song. Different. These guys are literally little, polar opposites, dogs. not just in music that they oh, really? make. But he has a song called Polar Opposites on there. That's ironic. The way that they move, the way that they live, the things that are important to them, their values, their moral compass, they are just two completely different people. Really it's pretty clear that Kendrick doesn't value fame. He's not on social media. He's very quiet, reserved. He's They're not flashy. Like the line about little Yachty. They act like the, you know, like the sibling that like you hate in your family. Like, they yeah. get the. They got two different roles. Like yeah, the one like Step Brothers or something. Yeah, like the one like having attention, but the other one don't. Yeah. Like, yeah, Step Brothers. I say Step Brothers. That's yeah. how they acting like. It's great. I think they're like the same age. Are they? Yeah, because so. they, they were born remember. like the same year. Yeah, he was like Step Brother vibes. Like, I hate the way that you move. Like, whatever it is. Right. He want, and then Drake wants to be close with Kendrick. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. it's like a whole basically, Step Brother It's basically like the beginning of uh, Drake and Josh. Basically. <laughs> Drake, it's crazy because it's fucking Drake. But <laughs> right. Drake, he couldn't stand Josh. And Josh, like, he just always wanted to be, like, around Drake. Because he always wanted a sibling. Yeah. Like, a brother. And then they was like, no. <laughs> that is. So that's a good point. Yeah, that's what it's giving. In reference to Drake's friendship with him. Drake is excellent at remaining tapped into what the youth are doing, and people like Yachty act as a vessel to doing just that. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk, I hate the way that you dress. Coming back to the Kill Bill theory, the way that Drake walks, talks, and dresses are all aspects that are tied to his costume. Kendrick hates these things not because of what they represent, but because it's not authentic to Drake's true identity. This line didn't surprise me in the slightest. I truly believe that Drake has made attempts to make amends with Kendrick over the did. years and likely wanted to get back in his good graces. While we know Drake is competitive, Cartoon I believe he wanted to make Kendrick an asset rather than an enemy. However, because of the differences in these two people, Kendrick probably realized pretty quickly that Drake wasn't someone that he cared to get along with. Drake and Kendrick have been exchanging subliminals for the better part of a decade, and while Drake maybe viewed this as friendly sparring, 
Kendrick has proven to be someone that values the crown in a different way. Mm. Fuck the big three, it it's just big me. I even hate when you say the word nigga, but that's just me, I guess. Some shit just cringeworthy, ain't mm, even gotta, gotta be deep, deep I guess. Mm -hmm. So another line with an extreme amount of depth culturally. You need to think about how and where Kendrick grew up. Kendrick is from Compton, Section 8 projects to be specific. His family has direct ties to gang culture. He was five years old when his city was tipped upside down during the Rodney King riots. Mm. When you think about the use of the N-word and the history of how it became a thing in African American culture, what he's saying makes even more sense. America Man, has deep, deep ties to slavery. Yeah. I'm gonna be real, I did not know that. Like he was five years old when the Rodney King riot happened. It will make sense. Now it makes sense why he's so, well, as yeah, he should. Yeah, like, like he's so deep on, we gonna that, be all right. Like yeah, he's serious the music about he that. Makes, yeah. See, it's all why he don't, I see why he hates Drake. I see it. Yeah. Because I mean, he got to right. I mean, I feel he, like. It's crazy. He probably, he hates Drake, but he's pr he probably, like, he probably respects Aubrey. <laughs> That's pretty, <prep. Like, laughs> yeah. He probably like the way Kendrick sees it. Yeah. In the millions. In the case of Drake, he grew up in Canada, a place that does not have a history of black slavery. In fact, Canada only has 4,000 documented slaves. Then when we look at how Drake grew up, being raised in an affluent white neighborhood, going to very good schools, it's 100% clear that the N-word wasn't something that he heard being used. He didn't hear from his mother's family, he didn't hear from his friends, he didn't hear it at school. It just wasn't intertwined with his upbringing. Basically, there came a day in Drake's music career where he decided that he was going to start using the word. It isn't a natural thing for him, and it never was. Kendrick looks at Drake's use of the N-word just like the other aspects that make up his costume. This is not even up for debate. Like, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to tell you that that word clearly doesn't fit into the way that Drake speaks naturally. And I saw that a lot yeah. of people tried to pigeonhole Kendrick on this record as being racist, but that's not what any of this actually means. Drake Kendrick fans. is not trying yeah. to disregard that Drake is half black. He's just pointing out the elephant in the room. Matter of fact, I ain't even bleed him yet. Can I bleed him back? When I see you stand by sexy red, I believe you see two bad bitches. He starts by adding <laughs> some humor into the mix, mm -hmm. poking fun at Drake's relationship with sexy red, where Kendrick essentially Ooh. correlates Drake's energy <laughs> with that of a female Drake and not a man. I believe you don't like women. It's real competition. You might pop ass with them. Kendrick then continues with the humor from the previous line. Sexy Red, along with her fan base, are known for <laughs> twerking, and he says that Drake should join in on the fun. This could also be in reference to the nickname coined for Drake by Rick Ross, <laughs> BBL Drizzy. Hmm. Kendrick also seems to insinuate that Drake could be gay, alluding to how Sexy Red is his real competition when it comes to male attention. He also alludes to Sexy Red as being another form of competition when it comes to the actual music. However, the line also has a more serious tone hmm. as Kendrick could be alluding to the fact that Drake doesn't like women because he likes younger girls. I mean, at this point, it's been Kendrick's oh, main man. angle that he's been playing for most of his records, right? Let's speak on percentage. Show me your splits. I'll make sure I double back with you. Kendrick continues to chip away at Drake's narrative from push-ups, rebuttaling Drake's lines regarding contract splits, and Kendrick seems fairly confident that his circumstance is still better than Drake's. He was signed to a nigga that signed to a nigga that said he was signed to that nigga. Again, all part of his strategy on this track, Kendrick is pulling previous information from others, and in this case, it is Pusha T's reference from Exodus 23 and 1. You signed to one nigga that signed to another nigga that signed to three niggas, now that's bad luck. Because Drake yeah, criticized Kendrick luck. regarding it his is. contract splits, yeah. he ultimately opened himself up entirely to being rebuttaled with a situation that could possibly be even worse. Kendrick alleges that Drake tried to strike down to like that record, which is an allegation that seemingly might be true, as we have seen leaked yeah, email was, surface yeah. that potentially confirm it. Now, there could very well be some truth to it, but anyone can make one of those emails. I can make yeah. one of those emails that looks just like that in five minutes. Back to back, I like that record. I'm gonna get back to that, that for the record. Kendrick claims that he likes Drake's record against Meek Mill back to back and proceeds to dish out a double entendre. 
Firstly, Kendrick announces mm. on this track that he's going back to back on Drake, which proved to be true as that's exactly what he did on the upcoming diss tracks. Yeah. Secondly, notice how he uses the words for the record. He uses this to point out that he already took a loss against Pusha T, but he's about to add another L to his record, receiving mm. back to back losses. Kendrick like alleges that Drake too. and OVO have been, have been offering right. money for information to use against Kendrick in a diss track. Previously, Pusha T bad. publicly mm -hmm, stated that bad. OVO was offering $100,000 in search of information for Drake to use in their beat. That's crazy. He then points out that he has kids to raise, and unlike Drake, that's his priority. However, this line has an even deeper meaning as Drake's father was absent for a large chunk of his upbringing. Since my dad used to tell me he would come into the house to get me, he ain't show me. So when Kendrick mm. says you don't know nothing about that, he's saying that Drake could not know much about fatherhood because he never experienced it himself. And this has been something that's been brought up in Drake's music a lot. So yeah. he, he's hitting them in a sore spot with this. Yeah. Waking them up, know nothing about that. They tell them to pray, know nothing about that. Waking them up in the morning, telling them to pray, like things yeah, that Drake might part, not have man. had from, from his dad. Teaching them morals, integrity, discipline, Ooh, listen, and you don't know nothing about that. So again, this tough, is one of the man. hardest angles on the disc where he's saying that Drake's dad wasn't around to teach him morals, integrity, and discipline. Basically, he's saying if you lacked all those things growing up, then how are you going to teach this to a child? You don't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. And it's a brilliant it's angle because he's setting it up like this is the reason why Drake is the way he is today. You've got no morals. you got no integrity. Nobody taught you. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering. You don't know nothing about that. Ain't and what Kendrick also means is that all these qualities that Drake lacks, that he can't teach his own kids, those are things that he's instilling into his own children that are important to him. Kendrick cleverly flips one of Drake's hardest lines from push-ups where Drake alluded to the volume of people that were teaming up to conspire against him. What the fuck is this, a 20 v one nigga? Kendrick perfectly flips his narrative by claiming that it's really him who's outnumbered, as Drake has a team of writers helping him to pen the verses. It ain't 20v1, it's 1v20. I gotta smack dudes that write for you. Like, that's fucking hard. Kendrick alludes to the multi talented artist Beam, who is known for writing for artists like Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, and even appears on the writing credits for Drake's track Rich mm. Flex. Coming off his last line about having to fight against 20 of Drake's writers, Kendrick claims that regardless of the quality of Drake's writers, he'll still clean them out, meaning he will defeat them easily. Am I pedaling ghosts or AI? Nigga feeling like Joe Hill Austin. Funny he was in a film called AI. And my sixth sense telling me to off him. These bars have quite a bit of depth and cause a lot of confusion, and I'm going to try to clear it up here. In the first line, Kendrick asked the question if he is battling ghosts or AI, song. which feeds into his it previous lines about Drake having ghostwriters. However, battling ghosts is also in reference to Drake using an AI Tupac to diss mm, Kendrick, yeah. and Tupac has been dead since 1996, so he is quite literally a ghost. He then makes reference to a famous but alleged corrupt pastor, Joel Osteen, who was accused of both using AI and ghostwriters to pen his books and sermons. Mm. It's also important to note that Joel Osteen is riddled with plastic surgery, which oh. could be a reference to the work that Drake had done himself. Ooh, However, wow. it gets even deeper when you find out that Osteen's church was once caught in a child abuse scandal. Oh. One of Osteen's volunteers was accused of doing this, and due to the narrative that Kendrick has levied against Drake's camp, this could also be another reference to just that. He then claims that Joel Osteen was in a movie called AI, which is actually incorrect, as it was a child star, Haley Joel Osmond. It's unclear if this was intentional or a mistake, but I believe that Kendrick just simply used the name Joel to connect the two people. We then find out that the two Joels are even more connected, as Haley Joel Osmond starred in the movies AI and The Sixth Sense. The line mm. contains even more depth when we look at the fact that Haley mm. Joel Osmond's character could sense. see and connect with Ghost in the movie The yeah. Sixth Sense. This and ties what, perfectly into Drake's AI Tupac gimmick, because without being oh, able yeah, to yeah. talk to Ghost, 
How could he really know if Tupac approved of what he was doing? That line is also crazy. So following with the theme of Drake being an outsider in this line, he's not just aiming at Drake, but at Toronto as a whole. Run to America, they imitate heritage, is Kendrick basically saying that the people of Toronto they, attempt to imitate LA gang culture. As you'll see in the don't. upcoming lines, Kendrick is mocking Toronto gangs for being imitators of LA gangs and saying that they aren't a threat. And Drake showed a lot of disrespect to the West Coast with the AI shit, and now he Kendrick's did. flipping that, dishing it back to him, hitting his city. Don't speak on a family, Crowley. You can get deep in your family, Crowley. Kendrick doesn't appreciate Drake speaking on his family. Well, he skipped the as part. He, did. he skipped the... Well, I guess he kind of talked over it. But, uh... Because, uh, he said uh, they come to America to imitate heritage. They can't imitate this violence. He said, uh... He said, niggas don't like the West Coast. I'm fine with it. I'll push the line with it. We could be on a three-hour time difference or something. Oh, like he that. did, but... Uh, yeah. He on a three or not. Uh, maybe that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what he meant. That, on the push-ups track where he made suggestions regarding Kendrick's wife, Whitney. He then uses the term Crody, which is another major cultural reference. Crody is a name flipped on the term Brody, which is a slang term derived from African culture. Mm. Brody oh, is wow. simply short for the term bro or brother, which are terms of African vernacular dating back to the early 20th century. Mm. However, in the last four or five years, the term Crody has began to surface in Toronto gang culture and eventually became more widespread amongst the people of Toronto itself. Even Drake started saying it. Brody, turn me up. So Kendrick is wow. really trying to drive two things home here. One, Drake is again stealing from a culture that he has little to no connections with. And two, Drake is now using gang vernacular, something else he has no ties to. And Drake also has a cat that's named Crody, so he's pretty much calling Drake a pussy. <laughs> this line is extremely clever and has more depth than what people believe. New Ho King is a Chinese restaurant located in Toronto, and years ago Drake was robbed at this location for his watch. However, the line contains way more depth when we look at this in the context of the Kill Bill movie. One of the most highly regarded fight scenes of all time is when Uma Thurman is in a Chinese restaurant mm. wearing the iconic yellow suit and fighting off countless people. Coming back to the fact that she recently offered Drake this suit and the fact that Kendrick flipped the 20v1 theory to claim that it's really him who has this battle, the line is even more crazy Man, as that. Kendrick is claiming yeah, that the Chinese are, okay, that makes a lot of sense. She was fighting him. Yeah. That's how he feels. Yeah, Kendrick oh, said that's okay, basically him at people, the end now. Yeah, because yeah. some people were saying that that's where Drake got robbed by. He was like near it, but either way, he was near it. Yeah. You know, King. It yeah. don't matter. You was over there by it. So he's saying like, I'm over there. You can find me if you want to. Like, mm. That's crazy. In Drake City, and that he's ready to take on everyone. Just think about it. She That's offers right. Drake the yellow suit for 20v1. He just flipped that line on him. Now he's in Drake City, in a Chinese food. Like, the reference makes that line even more fucking crazy, but everyone missed it. And that's why I take my time with this shit, because this is important. We don't keep, doing what, keep doing what you Keep doing your thing, bro. So again, as I explained before, people have taken this at a context in an attempt to make this about color, but this is not what Kendrick it's means. Not. Not. The entire premise of this record is quite literally painting Drake as a cultural outsider. In order to achieve this, Kendrick used the strategy of hitting Drake with undisputed truths. Kendrick's goal in this record was to showcase the elements that Drake incorporated into the costume that is his hip-hop persona. We saw references from people within the culture like Pusha T, Joe Budden, DMX, Rick Ross, and Meek Mill. Kendrick did this not because he didn't have any new information, but to drive home that the culture has already removed the mask from Drake on its own. This explains Kendrick's strategic use of the quote from The Wiz, everything they say about me is true. And let me remind you guys, I am not treating this thing like a fucking race. Like, I'm looking at the bigger picture of what all this means, knowing that in 10, 20 years, people are gonna wanna watch videos like this one, and I want that to be my video. 
Like, I'm a white dude who is, I'm a guest in this culture, you know? Like, if I can attach my name to this in any way, that is more than any money I'll ever make or, or any plaque or anything. What the lyrics? dirt is so dope, bro. He kills it, right? His He's Kendrick so fire. Kendrick. Oh, there, bro. That shit is so hard, dog. Run it back. Man, shout out to dude, bro. This bro, is, uh... Really and keep doing your thing, man. Too you bad. You sit there and learn it. Yeah, for real. Like, you know something. Like he acknowledged that he's like a guest in the culture. And that's what a lot of you non-black non, non -black people <laughs> need to accept you're a guest. Yeah. Stop trying to be the main character. Yeah. I've been trying to man. overdo it. But, uh, Swear. Like just calm down. <laughs> yeah, for real. Chill out. Chill out. But hang on. After watching this, man. I really don't like Drake. Yeah. I don't like nothing about Drake now. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like it in the first place. But when it comes to the music world, I... Well, I can't even do it now after yeah. hearing this shit. I don't yeah, know. it's like Drake. Just, just become Aubrey, man. Just go back to who you really are. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, or go back to acting. Or sit your ass down somewhere. Maybe an actor or something. But yeah, uh, he should have just stood to acting. But after watching this though, this Euphoria song, to me, this is just my opinion. This is like the greatest diss track of all time. It is. In my opinion. It is. Like, because you put the diss tracks in order, like Euphoria, meet the Grand. No. Before you yeah. six sixteen in LA, then you think Rams and no, then I like But that's a song. crazy run right there, bro. Like what you count like from oh. most to Oh, to like rank you? Yeah. Uh Meet the Grams would be last. Not like us would be third, six sixteen in LA second, then Euphoria number one. That's just me. Nice. So what you got? Uh, cause I like, cause I didn't listen. Yeah, I, you, I don't I mean, remember really six sixteen in LA. I don't remember. Yeah, really. but I I could say I'll give you four and number one. No, I don't want to least. No, it's most to yeah, least, right? Could, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Oops. One, one so I say four and one. Two. Meet the Grams two. You meet the Grams, bro. That was man. Yeah, and then not like us three, and then six sixteen LA. Cause I don't remember. It. Yeah, and plus it's not on no streaming, so yeah. So. Man, but uh, comment down below y'all rankings of all the diss tracks and ain't like you made it through this whole video I hope that you subscribe first you of all. You had to at least you gotta be You gotta be subscribed. Or liked it and comment somewhere. Ain't no way you didn't just sit there and didn't do nothing. Yeah, but um. What? Do you babe, see us? For real? Like, you come on, like this was a good video. Like, Do you not see us? And y'all know what happened behind the scenes in this whole editing process with this video. But um. <laughs> no, for real. But um. But either way, if y'all really sat here and watched this whole video, we appreciate y'all for real. Yeah. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Leave a like. Yeah. Comment down below. Yeah. Your thoughts and opinions. Yeah. And we out. My birthday on Monday, y'all. See, happy birthday. <laughs> Like a lamb. She thinks she fuck with me, so she gon' try to leave a man. But she blew me in the past, so she blew her chance. I told her if she come.